how can we show up everywhere we go as our real self or as much as we can you know much of our role playing comes from a desire to please other people but there's a glitch in the system we 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 can't really be everything to everyone it's a futile effort we we can't ever control how our actions are going to be perceived by others when we make a decision to present ourselves the way we think will please others we are robbing ourselves and others of the possibility of true connection maybe it's time to get off that struggle bus hello you are listening to the late bloomer living podcast where we are reimagining and redefining what it means to be in midlife where we are gathering energy, momentum, and excitement for our next chapter via candid conversations with other midlifers about their own pivots, pitfalls, and triumphs. I'm Yvonne Marchese, your host, and I'm so happy you're here. Hello, my friend. If you're listening to this podcast on the day it goes out into the world, then today is Wednesday, November 23rd of the year 2022 and tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I was listening to the radio the other day. It was one of my favorite shows on WNYC radio. It was the Brian Lehrer show. They usually have a call-in segment in which they ask a question and then listeners can call in with their response to the question. You know how it goes. So the question they asked on this particular day was, what version of yourself are you bringing to Thanksgiving dinner? And it got me thinking, boy, and how. It got me thinking about how we present ourselves in different situations. Do you find yourself acting differently, for instance, when you're at work versus when you're at dinner with friends? Do you, do you act differently when you're at home doing chores with your immediate family or while you're volunteering with your local community group? I'm going to guess the answer is yes. I think we all do a certain amount of code switching. You know, it takes a lot of energy, doesn't it? And by the time we get to midlife, whew, it's downright exhausting. We've logged way too many years trying to hide our true selves and present our shiny, happy, capable, confident, fill-in-the-blank selves. We're trying to present those selves to the world based on the people or the group of people we happen to be with at the moment. So here's a question. Which you is the real you? And if you are adjusting your behavior for different groups of people, isn't it a good question to ask yourself why? And I think another good question is, what does it cost you to be anything other than who you truly are? Now, I don't profess to know the answer to these questions. I'm still figuring it out for myself and they will be different for everyone. But I think they're great questions to ask ourselves so that we can become aware of the cost of that code switching and make some decisions about what we want to do about it. So getting back to the question, which version of yourself are you bringing to Thanksgiving dinner? You know, not only do we have Thanksgiving right around the corner, but we're smack in the middle of the holiday season right now. And for many of us, that means family gatherings. If we're lucky, it means we're bringing together multiple generations and family members who may or may not have the same political views. The people who called into this show, by the way, had a large range of answers to this question. There was a mom whose kid was coming home from college for the first time. I related to that very much. And she was determined to make it a peaceful, 
and easy re-entry into family life for her college kid who has become used to having freedom and choice over their schedule while they've been away. She had already made decisions to keep her own expectations low and leave plenty of room for her kid to sleep late if they need to and not overbook their time with activities. There was someone who called in who was anxious about how to handle touchy political conversations and was making a plan for how to stay out of the weeds in that arena. And there was a dad who was hosting for the first time as the torch was passed from older parents and he was eager to try some new recipes and break some traditions. You know, let's face it, it's a stressful time. I <laughs> Can I tell you, I often find myself singing It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year in this maniacal, ironic sort of way. It go, I'll, I'll do it for you. It goes a little something like this. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Anyway, so getting back to the question, which version of yourself are you bringing to Thanksgiving dinner? I want you to take a minute and think of it like a costume party. Are you going dressed as the good daughter? Um, the peacekeeper? Maybe the black sheep? Are you going as the political pundit? The stressed out host? Oh, maybe the long suffering mother? Or maybe the best version of your evolved self. Namaste. <laughs> we, we hope, right? Anyway, I, I wonder, you know, here you are, a full-grown adult. If your parents are still with you and you're planning to spend the holiday with them, are they still hosting? Or have you taken on the role of host? Do you find that you slip into the old patterns with your parents and you suddenly feel like a sullen teenager when they ask you an intrusive question or mention some old mistake you made in the past? Or are your kids grown and coming home to visit you? Have you pigeonholed them into old behaviors? Do you find it hard to let go of the parental responsibilities you had when they were younger and, and you know, suddenly you find yourself treating them like children, like... For me, this this is good. Are, are you doing things like uh, reminding them to go to the bathroom before you go somewhere or suggesting they put on a coat? Are you giving unsolicited advice? <sighs> the struggle is real, my friend. Do you find yourself walking on eggshells, trying oh so hard not to say anything to trigger a blow up? A lot of questions, right? Here's an idea, though. I wonder if you'd be willing to play a little game with me. I'm going to try it. Let's use this holiday season to simply notice how we're showing up. And don't feel like you need to change anything right now. Just be curious and notice how you're showing up without passing judgment on yourself. Make it a game. Here's another question. How can we show up everywhere we go as our real self or as much as we can you know much of our role playing comes from a desire to please other people but there's a glitch in the system we we, we can't really be everything to everyone it's a futile effort we we can't ever control how our actions are going to be perceived by others when we make a decision to present ourselves the way we think will please others we are robbing ourselves and others of the possibility of true connection maybe it's time to get off that struggle bus i mean you might feel so lost at this point that you're not even sure which version of yourself is the most true you i feel that way sometimes i did a little bit of research and I found some, some advice about how to get in touch with your authentic self. And I kind of distilled it down. So this is, this is where I'm at, okay? I've got six strategies, by the way, that, I, that I'm toying with. Number one, and this is a big one. Notice what feels good to you. Like, notice when do you feel the most like yourself, 
what are you doing when you feel like that? And who are you with when you feel good? Number two, I want you to try to see if you can identify the internal versus the external expectations. Whenever you're faced with a decision, take a moment to really distinguish between whether or not your decision is being influenced by an internal or an external force. Ask yourself if you're feeling pressured to do something because it's expected of you. And whose expectation is it? Is it your own expectation or someone else's? And then ask yourself if this is truly what you want. Does it make you feel good? Listen to your gut. Number three, be aware of your thoughts and actions. And this requires checking in with yourself throughout the day on a constant basis. You need to pay attention to those gut feelings I just talked about. Notice when your shoulders are up around your ears or you're clenching your jaw. Take a deep breath and see if you could identify the thought that's making you feel stress. And this will help you notice when you're being inauthentic because it doesn't feel good. Number four, surround yourself with community. So by this, I mean take stock of the people that are around you. And try as often as you can to surround yourself with the people who lift you up and cheer you on. You know, you might have to step outside your comfort zone and find some new friends. And I'm not saying you should dump old friends. But notice if being with them sends you into your old patterns or doesn't feel good. Getting back to that, does it feel good question. Okay, so number five, take daily action. I'm big on this one. Tap into what brings you joy every day and commit to taking action towards what you want you know changing a lifetime of habits and habitual thinking wow it can be overwhelming but it's possible it's possible to rewire ourselves through day-to-day actions set yourself up for daily success by setting your intentions in the morning this is why my morning routine is so important to me every day and This is a good one. Make time on your calendar to take a small step towards what you want each and every day. You know, baby steps, they really do add up. If you spend a few minutes researching that career change you're thinking about, practice the art that you want to explore or the sport that's bringing you joy and commit to those those small tasks, you know, just bite-sized. It's the small moments. It's the things you say, your decisions, and your actions that add up to who you are. Okay, number six, slow down to speed up. When you're working to figure something out or make changes in your life, you might feel the urge to keep grinding and working to figure it out. You might feel like you're banging your head against a wall because it's hard to change. And sometimes that grinding can just leave you in a worked up state of overthinking. And this might be the moment to take some time to do something fun. Just take a step back and don't worry. Your brain will keep working on the problem in the background. Taking a break helps your intuition to kick in and then the answers are going to bubble to the surface. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the world needs the true you. I mean, aren't you tired of seeing everyone's perfectly curated versions of themselves on their social media feeds? How refreshing is it when someone lets their guard down? Imagine a world where, now I feel like the guy in the movie trailers, imagine a world Imagine a world where we are all living our best lives and celebrating our mistakes and failures as learning moments. You know, it takes courage 
to dive in and figure out who you are after a lifetime of play acting. But when you do, you have the chance to set yourself free. And that's when you can build a purpose-filled life that brings you joy. It takes practice and it's not going to happen overnight. But with grit and determination and a willingness to get uncomfortable and just, just, just dive in, you can get there. So one last bit of encouragement as you head into Thanksgiving and the rest of the holiday season. Relax. I hope you'll play this game with me. You know, let's just... I'd love to hear from you, too, if you decide to do this. I want to know how it works for you. Um, I'm going to do it. Let's make it a game to just notice which version of ourselves we're bringing. And notice if it feels good. If it feels good, do more of the same. If it doesn't feel good, then maybe just note that. And don't beat yourself up. Just notice it. You know, you do you, you got this. That's all for now. I'll be back next week with a great guest. And in the meantime, stay safe and well. Thank you for listening. We'll talk soon. <laughs>